Hello, Dragonfly Swarm. Nahida is finally here. She is the brand new Dendro 5 star character in Genshin who happens to be an Archon character and is playable. And she's not only very fun to play, but also is one of the strongest new characters we've seen in quite a while. Her purpose is technically supposed to be that of a Dendro enabler, but that's an understated way of describing her because she is a very versatile within Dendro's meta and can play as an on field driver and off field enabler, support, all different roles, thanks to her relatively simple and very powerful kit. So, naturally, in this video, I'm gonna go over over everything you'll need to know about Nahida's kit, her constellations, her best artifacts, weapons, and teams so that you can get the most impact out of this powerful little god. Thank you to Hoyoverse for allowing me to test her early so that I could give the most accurate guide and review possible, and with that said, if you haven't already, you should totally subscribe because it very much helps my channel and I think only around 15% of my viewers are actually subscribed. Anyways, alright, we're gonna start by discussing the intricate details of Nahida's kit because Nahida's abilities and passives help to give her a very abstract playstyle as a dendro damage dealer and enabler, one who can fit into many different teams for many different reasons. So Nahida's attack talent is pretty interesting even for a catalyst user because while her attack talent scaling levels are quite low, her attack speed is pretty good. And as a dendro catalyst user, she's able to drive dendro reactions to empower her reaction damage output. So if you plan on running her as an on-field unit, you won't need to invest in this talent because it already functions quite well for her needs as a driver, but you can if you want to. The talent itself is a 4-hit combo that deals AoE dendro damage in a trail directly in front of Nahida. So you should note that she can't actually target enemies with these attacks if they're far above the ground, but the attacks are quite fast, and they follow standard ICD, which means every three hits, Nahida can trigger a reaction, making her quite strong as an on-field driver when pairing these fast attacks with her elemental skill. Also, her charge attack creates a squishy looking square that explodes in front of her for AoE dendro damage, but generally it won't be worth using these charge attacks too often because of their large stamina cost. However, moving on to that fancy elemental skill, all schemes to know, is very much the bread and butter ability of her entire kit and it is a weird ability, in a good way. The skill itself has a press version and a hold version, the cooldowns being 5 seconds and 6 seconds respectively. So when you press the skill, Nahida simply swipes the area in front of her for AoE dendro damage, and will mark up to 8 enemies she hits with the Seed of Skanda mark. You can tell when an enemy is affected by this mark because they'll have a green flower on them, and it's important to note that multiple enemies affected by the mark will be linked to each other if they stand close to one another. If you hold this skill, Nahida will enter an aiming mode similar to a bow charged attack, and inside of this aiming mode, she can actually look around and select the enemy she wants to mark for up to 8 enemies total. And from my experience, it is extremely easy to just hold the skill, quickly swipe across the screen, and select every enemy that I pass. Marking an enemy in the hold mode will deal its own initial instance of damage as well. So, once you've marked an enemy with Nahida's skill, what happens is the mark will linger on that enemy for 25 seconds, and during this time, any elemental reaction you trigger on the opponent or any form of bloom damage they take will cause the mark to trigger and deal dendro damage to that enemy and any other nearby enemy that also has the mark. This can happen roughly once every 2.5 seconds at a baseline, but that interval can be shortened, and I'll explain that in a bit. The damage dealt by these triggered marks scales with a portion of Nahida's attack and EM, allowing her to double down quite well on elemental mastery substats for high DPS. But also, the damage dealt by the Seed of Skanda marks do not have any elemental ICD, allowing Nahida to provide a reliable source of powerful dendro application far superior to that of our other available dendro characters. This alone allows Nahida to trigger spread damage on essentially all of her Skanda seed hits, but also allows allows her to trigger Bloom very often, which I'll discuss more in depth later. So, as for her elemental burst, Nahida will summon a giant AoE zone that provides herself and her team with buffs while they're inside of the zone. For Nahida specifically, the burst will augment her abilities based on the elements of her party members. For example, with Pyro teammates in the party, her elemental skills mark gets a damage bonus. With Electro units in the party, her elemental skills marks can trigger faster. And with Hydro units in the party, Nahida's elemental burst duration will be extended. And each of these respective buffs can increase up to two times with two characters of the same element in the party. That basically just means that if you have two Hydro characters, both of them will further increase the duration of Nahida's burst, but adding a third Hydro unit won't increase the duration any further. And yes, you can theoretically have all of these buffs active simultaneously by slotting Nahida with a Pyro, Electro, and Hydro teammate. It's also important to note that these augmentations will still affect Nahida even if she's off the field, so long as the active character is within the burst zone. But thanks to Nahida's first ascension passive, her elemental burst will also buff your active character by granting them 25% of the elemental mastery that your highest EM party member has, for up to 250 EM total. Now, it's important to note that this buff cannot be further amplified from percent based elemental mastery buffs, like for example Sucrose's 4th ascension passive, because in that case, Sucrose's added EM will just slap on top of the character's total elemental mastery, it will not make Nahida's 1st ascension passive grant more EM. So that does alternatively mean that flat sources of EM, such as Kazuha's 2nd constellation, Diona's 6th constellation, Dendro Resonance, and Albedo's 4th ascension passive, actually 
actually will add to Nahida's EM buff equation as well as slapping on top of the active character. And as for Nahida's fourth ascension passive, it's another very powerful part of her kit that actually heavily incentivizes building EM for Nahida so that you can hit the 1000 EM threshold. The passive essentially just grants extra crit rate and damage percent for her elemental skills mark damage based on how much EM she has after 200, and it entirely caps out at 1000 EM. But this alone doesn't actually mean you'll want to completely throw your main stats into elemental mastery because remember that Nahida can grant herself a ton of elemental mastery and generally plays in teams with lots of EM buffs anyways. That's something that I'll explain in more detail in the artifact section, but in general, don't jump the gun and build entirely into EM because anything over 1000 will become less valuable for Nahida. And finally with Nahida's kit analysis, the most important detail of this entire guide is that her elemental skills aiming mode can pick up certain overworld items and can read the minds of poor unassuming NPCs. For talent priority, you'll want to focus most of your resources into Nahida's elemental skill, then into her burst, and then finally her attack talent if you want to play her as an on-fielder. And again, you don't have to invest in the attack talent because it's just slightly more personal damage, but the option is there. Alright, moving onwards to constellations, Nahida's are, as you might expect of an Archon character, quite crazy. So we're gonna go through them and explain what they do and what their worth is, but I do want to make it very clear that even at C0, Nahida is a very powerful character and is fully functional in her respective roles. So, C1 is basically gonna permanently increase the level of each buff from her burst by one. So rather than needing two Hydro characters in your party to fully cap the burst duration extension, you would only need one because this constellation is granting you the first level for free. It's a pretty good constellation because it'll allow Nahida to permanently benefit from all aspects of her burst buffs, regardless of how you build her teams. So in terms of functionality and quality of life, this is a notable constellation to shoot for. At C2, enemies that are marked by her elemental skill will now suffer greatly. Because Burning Bloom, Hyper Bloom, and Burgeon damage can now critically strike them, which is kind of unheard of because up until this point, no transformative reactions can critically strike in Genshin. But additionally, any enemies inflicted with Quicken, Aggravate, or Spread will have their defense reduced by a considerable 30% for a short time. So this entire constellation is just a considerable damage buff for any and all Dendro teams Nahida fits into. If you want to see bigger damage output, this is a good constellation. C3 adds 3 levels to her skill, which is quite nice considering how well it scales per level, but note that this won't have any effects on the skill's spread damage nor her ability to proc blooms and whatnot. It only benefits the personal damage of Nahida's skill. At C4, Nahida will grant herself an elemental mastery buff based on how many nearby enemies are marked by her elemental skill, which honestly for on-field Nahida is extremely valuable because it allows her to build even less EM in favor of other offensive stats while still reaching her 1000 EM threshold. But it's still not a necessary constellation, it just opens up more potential for stat spread options. C5 adds 3 levels to Nahida's burst, which is pretty nice, but each elemental buff only scales by a small bit per level, so objectively there's less value in this constellation than in her other constellations, and I wouldn't shoot for this one as your end goal. And finally, at C6, Nahida will now trigger extra instances of powerful dendro damage whenever she attacks enemies affected by her skill. I'm actually unsure of the full potential of this constellation because I was unable to test it myself, but you can expect this to function as a means of significantly more personal dendro damage as well as more dendro application. So at a baseline, it is a quite powerful constellation and could potentially be a lot stronger than I'm making it out to be. I'll correct this in my pinned comment if that's the case. But in general with Nahida's constellations, they're all quite nice for providing extra value and more damage potential to her kit, but also aren't required to enjoy Nahida to her fullest extent. So if you're going to shoot for constellations, I'd say the most notable ones for their value are C1, C2, and C6 if you can afford it. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the artifact set options because Nahida has two very clear best in slot options and the hard part will be deciding between them. I'm gonna start with four piece Deepwood Memories because this set provides Nahida with extra dendro damage as well as a means of shredding dendro resistance, which is a rare mechanic. Therefore, in scenarios where dendro damage makes up a majority of the team's damage, say for instance in Bloom, Hyper Bloom, Burgeon, and Spread teams, Nahida will derive significant value from this set if no one else is using it. And generally, you'll find that Nahida just happens to play as the only dendro unit on a lot of teams because she provides so much value on her own already, so she'll often end up being your best option for slotting this artifact set. However, given the huge importance of elemental mastery in Nahida's kit, she actually can get away with ignoring 4-piece Deepwood in favor of 4-piece Guild of Dreams in some scenarios. Most commonly in teams where dendro damage is only a portion of the team's DPS, such as aggravate teams, but even in dendro-focused teams, 4-piece Guild of Dreams can be competitive with Deepwood if your stats are strong enough, and if you're Nahida can properly balance her EM stacking and crit ratios. So the general consensus is, inside of dendro-heavy teams, 4-piece Deepwood is going to be your best option, but Guild of Dreams can be competitive. And inside of teams where Dendro isn't the main damage focus, 4-piece Guild of Dreams can end up stronger than 4-piece Deepwood. And obviously, if you already have 4-piece Deepwood on a teammate, you'll run 4-piece Guild of Dreams on Nahida because Deepwood 
Deepwood's passive does not stack. As temporary set options, you can run 2-piece Deepwood with a 2-piece EM set, or you could also run 2-piece EM, 2-piece EM, but they should only be temporary artifact options because of how significantly stronger my aforementioned recommendations are. And as for artifact stats, this is where things can get a little complicated, but you'll survive. If I survived, you will too. So, Nahida is a character that can run any combination of the following, an EM Sands, a Dendro slash EM Goblet, and a Crit slash EM Circlet. And any number of these combinations could end up being the best options for your Nahida, depending on the scenario. But the best way to decide which main stats to shoot for is to understand that you don't generally want Nahida to go above 1000 EM, because once her 4th ascension passive caps out, EM becomes less valuable on her. But you also don't always have to use all of your artifact stats to carry her to 1000 EM, because if she's playing as an onfielder, she's giving herself a large chunk of elemental mastery from her 1st ascension passive. So you'd likely enjoy running with something like an EM Sands, Dendro Goblet, and Crit Circlet, and you'll still come close to or reach the 1000 elemental mastery threshold. As an offfielder though, this could become more difficult since she's not enjoying her own EM buff, so in general, you'll want to find a good balance with her main stats that provides her with enough EM to cap out around 1000. And as for substats, first and foremost, as always, you're gonna want to fill out Nahida's energy threshold for her burst. As an on-field driver, Nahida can generate a lot of energy for herself, so she'll typically only need around 130% ER, but this number could be slightly higher or lower depending on how well your teammates battery her and how long your rotations are. But as for off-field Nahida, if you want to use her burst consistently, consistently, which I still recommend doing, you're gonna need to focus quite a bit more ER, ranging from 160 to 180% depending on the team. And any EM over the 1000 mark for her ascension passive can become a bit less valuable, but overall the value of EM substats is still very high on Nahida. And finally, she obviously very much enjoys crit substats to try to fill out a 1 to 2 ratio, and she's okay with attack substats. The next area of discussion we gotta go through is Nahida's best weapons, and luckily Nahida is following a similar trend as other recent characters, wherein she doesn't heavily rely on a weapon's base attack to see good value and good damage, meaning we've got some really nice options to work with at all levels of investment. You'll usually enjoy weapons that provide EM, crit, or damage percent bonuses for Nahida because these all provide her with the most value within her respective roles. So starting with her best in slot and signature weapon, a thousand floating dreams is generally going to be your best option for Nahida. The weapon provides a huge EM bonus, which Nahida makes great use of obviously, but it also provides passive bonuses based on the elements of Nahida's teammates that can stack up to three times per bonus and both of the bonuses, EM and elemental damage, are valuable for her. But another interesting thing is that not only does this weapon just flat out increase your entire party's EM by 40 with no conditions, but this bonus can stack if you have multiple floating dream weapons on multiple teammates. So yeah, obviously you'll find that this weapon is valuable in virtually every scenario Nahida plays in, but interestingly enough, it can actually be outperformed by another weapon when Nahida is playing as an onfielder, that weapon being Kagura's Verity. Since Kagura's Verity is already such a heavy stat stick and considering on field Nahida can easily proc and max out the weapon passive, this weapon actually becomes competitive with her signature weapon if she's already built a proper amount of elemental mastery and if she's playing as an on-fielder. It's a very strong weapon, and for similar reasons, Solar Pearl also reigns as a high-end option for Nahida since it functions so well with her on-field playstyles. The crit rate bonus is nice, and the ability to increase her skill damage just by normal attacking is extremely valuable given how much of her damage comes from her skill. Interestingly enough too, with high refinements, this 4-star can become competitive with not only Kagura's Verity, but even Nahida's signature weapon when playing her as an on-fielder. The Widzith can also be a very good option for Nahida in general if you're okay with the inconsistency of this weapon, because if it does grant the attack buff rather than the elemental damage or EM buff, your Nahida's damage will suffer quite a bit. Plus, she suffers from the buff's long downtime, but it's still a valid option and generally performs respectably well with her other weapons. You can also run with the new Wandering Evenstar Catalyst on Nahida pretty comfortably for its nice EM bonus, and at high refinements, it proves to be a pretty powerful buffing weapon, making it versatile for off-field and for on-field Nahida, although not generally as strong as her other recommendations that I've made. Nahida can also very comfortably use Sacrificial Fragments, especially when running off the field, because the massive EM bonus this weapon provides is all she'll need to come online as a powerful enabler, and it will generally be one of your strongest options if you consider an off-field playstyle, because she needs more EM anyways. And for similar reasons, Magic Guide, a 3-star weapon, is also very respectable when playing Nahida as an off-fielder. And though it's pretty much always weaker than the weapons that I've already mentioned, it's not that much weaker, and it runs surprisingly well for a 3-star since Nahida values the large EM bonus so highly. But since Magic Guide is technically my off-field Nahida free-to-play recommendation, Mapa Mare is going to be my official on-field free-to-play recommendation. Mapa Mare is craftable and at high refinements actually works really nicely for on-field Nahida since she can stack the passive so easily and enjoys the EM stat. And though it isn't among her strongest options, it is her best free option as an on-fielder. And there are other expensive options such as Lost Prayer that can be competitive for on-field Nahida as well if you 
have it, but I will say, any weapons outside of all the ones I just mentioned are not typically going to perform as well in Nahida, and they're more expensive or resource hungry to obtain than many of my recommendations anyways. And just to clarify, for weapons like Hakushin Ring and Fruit of Fulfillment, you actually won't generally enjoy these despite them being free to play weapons that somewhat conform to Nahida's playstyles, and the reason is because they both have energy recharge weapon stats, which is generally unnecessary and therefore a notable damage loss on Nahida. So to summarize Nahida's best weapons, since they do change up quite a bit depending on her playstyle, for on-field Nahida, your strongest weapons in relatively soft order will be Kagura's Verity, her signature weapon, Solar Pearl, The Widzith, Lost Prayer, Mapa Mare, Skyward Atlas can work to some extent, and then other weapons, typically those that are elemental mastery based, like Magic Guide, Sack Frags, Wandering Evenstar, etc. And so for off-field Nahida, again in relatively soft order, you're gonna find the most value out of her signature weapon. Then you'll enjoy Kagura's Verity, The Widzith, Sack Frags, Wandering Evenstar, and Magic Guide, and other weapons after those will provide notably less value since off-field Nahida doesn't care about much other than elemental mastery and the occasionally synergistic weapon passive. Uh, and crit ratios and energy recharge. <laughs> All right, we're gonna move on to team building. Nahida is a character that a lot of people have been waiting for when it comes to Dendro teams, and objectively speaking, she is, by a very long shot, the strongest Dendro character that we currently have access to. And not only that, her insane versatility and ease of use has created a whole new level to Dendro teams that I'm excited to talk about in this video. So in this section, I'm gonna discuss every team she works best with, explaining how and why they work so well. And we're gonna start with Hyper Bloom teams, because Nahida has absolutely outdone herself with this team archetype. These teams previously were kinda limited by our roster of Dendro characters, none of whom worked particularly amazing for driving and generating Hyperbloom damage, although Dendro Traveler was and still is a very respectable pick. Nonetheless, Hyperbloom still found its way as one of the strongest iterations of Dendro teams that we had when 3.0 released, even despite its clear limits. But Nahida has introduced the role of a Dendro driver, wherein she can apply constant and powerful Dendro application inside of these teams to drive the fastest Hyperbloom generation we've ever seen. And beyond that, her application is so fast that it also occasionally allows her to trigger spread on her normal attacks and her skill for massive personal dendro damage, and all of her skill damage can chain to multiple linked enemies when these reactions affect them. So naturally, Nahida is a staple unit for these teams going forward, and the best part is that there are a lot of variations you can build around with her for different reasons. In order to build around a Hyperbloom team, your Nahida will need to be teamed up with an Electro Reaction Carry such as Raiden, Kuki Shinobu, Yaimiko, etc., and they'll also need a Hydro unit such as Singcho, Yelan, Kokomi, Ayato, child, etc. And these three slots are mandatory so that you can create hyperblooms. But the fourth slot can be filled by quite a large number of different characters, which can dramatically change up how you play this team. For example, you could fill the slot with an off-field carry like Beto, which would introduce heavy off-field electro damage, as well as capping Nahida's electro burst buff, meaning her skill will trigger even faster. Also, Beto works so well here because she can't steal your other electro unit's hyperblooms. But other flex characters such as Zhongli, Jean, or Kokomi also work quite well for survivability, but you could instead opt to slot an animal crowd controller, which can be especially valuable if you're running Nahida with lots of AoE characters. But one of the strongest and most flexible variants of this team right now is Nahida, Raiden slash Shinobu, Singcho, and Yelan. These four create a team that mixes a lot of personal and reaction damage together for a very high total team DPS, and this is one of many Hyperbloom variants where Nahida works absolutely amazing as an on-field driver. But again, there are so many variants of Hyperbloom, and naturally, Nahida is a core unit in virtually all of them. But she also works really nicely in Burgeon teams, which I previously hated, but actually Nahida's introduction to the game has made them far more functional and enjoyable than they were. You're obviously still going to need Nahida to team up with a Pyro Reaction Carry such as Toma and a Hydro Enabler such as Singcho, Child, Kokomi, etc. And the fourth slot can be flexed by any number of teammates for different reasons. For example, much like the very powerful Double Hydro Hyperbloom team I just mentioned, you could build a team around Nahida, Toma, Singcho, and Yelan. And using Nahida as a driver, you'll be able to create lots of burgeon explosions without triggering burning very often since Singcho and Yelan apply so much Hydro together. Alternatively, you could instead use that fourth slot to fill with a survivability unit such as Zhongli or Kokomi. This is a valid option since Burgeon teams deal so much damage to your active character. But the reason Nahida works so well with Burgeon teams is because her Dendro application is fast enough and powerful enough to kinda not care if she triggers burning every now and then, because she'll still just drown it out with more Dendro and, in turn, more Burgeon seeds. I also wanted to mention that she works really well with the Intergrational Burgeon team, where you use Child, Bennett, and Kazuha to create some 
some of the highest upfront AoE damage in the game. But moving on to Quicken Teams, and by Quicken Teams, I'm referring to Aggravate Teams and Spread Teams, Nahida is essentially your best Dendro option in all of them, <laughs> regardless of whether you slot her as your on-field or your off-field unit. Take for example Aggravate Teams with an Electro DPS such as Sino, Kuching, Yaimiko, Fischl, etc. Well obviously Nahida works amazing as an enabler for these characters, since her Dendro application has such a long field time, but her burst also provides a massive elemental mastery buff for these characters while they're on the field, so they can enjoy quite a bit more aggravate damage without sacrificing unnecessary amounts of their own substats for EM. So yes, Nahida is exactly the support Sino needed for his long field time, and also Nahida works really well with Yaimiko as an alternating pair of on-field drivers. It's a fascinating and very powerful duo that I'm probably gonna make a video about, but essentially any Quicken team that you would slot Dendro Traveler or Kole into, you can instead slot Nahida into for significantly more spreads, dendro damage, particle generation, and team utility. Simply put, she is the far superior version of DMC and Kole in these teams. And in spread teams, which currently is only really referring to Tignati, Nahida works well. She triggers lots of spreads alongside Tignati, and her EM buff is very valuable to him, especially if he has his signature weapon. Plus, they both enjoy the dendro resonance passive when slotted together, so it's another nice synergy for Quicken teams. And in general, as I said, Quicken teams were already pretty easy to work with, Nahida just happens to provide significantly more value to all of these teams than Kole and Dendro Traveler can. Not to bash on those two, they're still functional and respectable in these teams. Nahida just elevates it all to another level. But next, I wanted to talk about Nahida's bountiful core team with Nilu, since Nilu has essentially created her own pocket of teams. Regular Bloom teams, even with Nahida, are still pretty underwhelming, unfortunately, but that's mostly just because Bloom was only meant to be a catalyst for all of its other variants, those variants being Burgeon, Hyper Bloom, and most recently, Nilu's bountiful Blooms. And yes, Nahida works very well in Nilu's Bloom teams. In fact, as the on-field driver, Nahida can act as the team's only Dendro unit, and you can run three Hydro units for extremely fast Bountiful core output. Plus, Nahida's ability to massively buff your team's elemental mastery as you cycle between each character's skills can make a considerable number of your Bountiful cores deal a lot more damage. But the last team archetype I wanted to mention is Burning Teams, and only because they're viable with Nahida for one specific reason right now. <laughs> Nahida has a unique Dendro application of 1.5 units, which basically just means that she can sustain the burning reaction quite well if triggered properly. And what that means is that you can run something like Melt Ganyu pretty reliably. Nahida will provide Ganyu with good pyro application and a massive elemental mastery buff from her burst, which will in turn cause this variant of Melt to be quite possibly Ganyu's strongest. Uh, the problem is, you do need relatively consistent off-field pyro, which makes it pretty tedious to team comp with and very tedious to set up on the field. So essentially, if it works, it works really well, but if you mess it up, it doesn't work at all. And it's unfortunate unfortunately not difficult to mess up. Your most reliable team options are running Nahida and Ganyu with Bennett and Kazuha, so that Kazuha can provide constant off-field pyro, but this iteration of the team has no shielding, which can be detrimental to Ganyu if she's knocked around. But if you were to swap Kazuha with Zhongli, Bennett and Nahida alone can't really sustain the burning reaction well enough for Ganyu, so you'd have to use a different pyro unit, and at that point, you would be better off just replacing Nahida. So as I said, it can work really well, but it can also be quite useless. Overall though, Nahida is absolutely insane. She slots into so many different teams with multiple playstyles, and she provides unmatched value as an enabler, DPS, and buffer in all of them. And on top of that, she's super fun and arguably very easy to play. So if this guide helped you or you just liked watching it, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe because it very much helps my channel. Thank you for watching, I hope you pull Nahida, and I will see you in the next video, I suppose.